Wakanda forever. I don't have anything quippy to say besides that, so let's get on to the review. Oh, gosh. <sighs> Why? Why? I was watching videos before I started filming this. Okay. Black Panther Wakanda Forever. This movie was on my top 10 most anticipated films for 2022. And as I indicated in my out of the theater reaction that I filmed right there in the theater as the ushers were coming in and cleaning up, I liked this movie. I thought it was actually pretty doggone good. It's not perfect by any means, but I feel like having it in my top 10 and it not ending up being a disappointment was a plus in the end. So let me just try to get my thoughts organized. I did take notes. I don't have a ton of notes, but I did take notes. The I'll start off by just giving the synopsis of the movie, which you probably already know if you saw the trailer. This film introduces Namor and there's going to be this clash between him and his people and Wakanda. And that's basically the premise. It's, it's pretty basic. Well, basic and basic, whatever. That's the premise. There's this conflict between the two of them. Also, it involves some of the characters that we've seen before, like uh, Martin Freeman's character, people, you know, like some of the U.S. characters, um, um, well, I'm no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say because uh, maybe some of the, maybe some of these weren't revealed as being in the movie. I, I'm not sure. Uh, certainly in the trailer, not everybody that shows up in the movie was in the trailer. So there might be one or two pleasant surprises, or maybe at least one. So I'm going to keep this as spoiler free as possible. I would have to say that. This movie starts off with a very somber tone. This film in general is not... So I never saw Thor, but I heard plenty about it. And I heard about the ridiculous sort of humor that was, that was thrown into it. This film in general, while there are some moments of levity or some comedy, you know, situation or dialogue comedy or whatever, this movie has a pretty serious tone to it. It's not necessarily dark and gritty like, let's say, the Batman from earlier this year or, you know, Batman versus Superman, that sort of, you know, Snyder versus DC dark tone. It doesn't have that. It's very colorful and beautiful. The scenery is gorgeous. The costumes are gorgeous. And it's very eye ple like, There's a lot of eye candy going on when it comes to things like that. But this does take a more serious tone to it. And I feel like if it did anything other than that, it would have felt kind of disrespectful to not only the first movie, but just to the, the whole memory of Chadwick Boseman. And this movie starts off with a very sad tone to it. His funeral is, ha well, things happen. It shows, it explains his death. They incorporated his real life passing into this in, in the sense that they attribute it to it was an, it's an unknown illness. At some point, uh, they don't get into specifics. At some point, they they brought up the fact that he suffered in silence, which was very much what happened with Chadwick. He did not tell the public at large what was happening. Um, many of his uh, close acquaintances didn't even know. And so they, they tied that in very well, I feel like. And as a whole, I feel like this movie was a good honor to him and his legacy within the MCU. And it, his, his presence or the lack of his presence is infused pretty heavily throughout the film, especially the beginning. And it's woven in during the story. You know, it's not all, it can't all be about him. There are these other things, other stories to tell, but the lack of his presence is definitely felt in the film because it's a major theme going on with like, let's say the character of his sister and his mother and his love interest, basically all of Wakanda and also very heavily felt at the end. And by heavily felt, I mean, there is a tearjerker 
of um, a scene that happens uh, where flashback or videos of interactions between him and his sister in the first movie and her reflections on that and her grief, you know, because uh, the movie, she's trying to hold a lot of her grief at bay because she had indicated that if she thought about it too much, she would want to burn the world or something like that because it would just, it would just drive her to that point. And so there's that time, you know, that moment at the end of the movie where she's reflecting on that and they show those scenes and they play that song by Rihanna. I don't remember the name of it, but I remember hearing about it before I went to see it. I didn't listen to it because I didn't want to know anything about it, but holy cow, woof, floodgates open for me. And I got really, really weepy at that moment. And because it just, you know, it's still so stinking sad what happened to him and I couldn't help but think and I, I mentioned this when I watched the trailer I couldn't help but think how sad this must have been to work on this movie remembering that the last time they had filmed he had been with them and they had no idea at the time that he was suffering with cancer and so I just it's just it's just sad the whole thing with him is terrible. And I was thinking that during the moments when when they're showing the grief going on, and I was thinking to myself, well, I don't think they had to act too much for this. You know, I, I got the sense that a lot of the emotion that they were portraying on the screen with regard to the loss of T'Challa was very much real. And you could feel that in their performances. And it's very much appreciated to see that he was, uh, his memory was was honored in that sort of way. He was, it wasn't just like he was just brushed off. Oh, he died. Okay, okay, let's carry on. No, it wasn't like that. I felt like it was uh, handled extremely well. And I think that fans of Chadwick Boseman and the first Black Panther will probably be pretty pleased with it. I mean, that's, and that's how I felt. I'm not like a hardcore uh, Black Panther fan. I really enjoyed the first movie. It's not my favorite of the Marvel movies, but it's it's pretty solid. And I enjoyed this one as well. I feel like it's a pretty solid entry. It's probably one of the more decent uh, entries in the MCU franchise that we've had in a long time. And, and by MCU franchise, I'm including the shows because I feel like with a lot of the shows and some of the movies that have come out of late that MCU is stumbling pretty hard and this feels like we're kind of getting back to what made the MCU as decent as it was in the very beginning. And so I appreciated that. Something that was very touching and very somber was at the beginning. This is going to be non-spoilery, but I'm just going to give you a taste of what it felt like as the, when this started. You know how when the Marvel logo comes up and they show all these different scenes from all these different MCU movies and they play that music dun 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 dun, dun or however whatever. I'm not I'm not a singer, but you know what I'm talking about. When they did that for this movie, it was completely silent. And the only scenes they showed were scenes of Chadwick Boseman in the role of T'Challa in Black Panther and that was that was pretty hard hitting. I mean, it would you the the music, the lack of music, helped really ground the mood of this movie from the very beginning. And they did, and, and it was a very similar thing that they did in in um, the beginning. I mean, I'm sorry, it was a very very similar sort of thing they did at the end during those those moments of reflection uh, of him. So, you know, you get started off as you know, it's just kind. Of, it's just this sort of overwhelming kind of sadness that that hangs over the movie, but it's not burdened down overly by that because of this story that's being told. So Suri is very cynical about a lot of stuff just because of the passing of her brother. And so she has this interesting character arc that she goes through over the course of the film, you know, moving from cynicism and denial of grief to you see her thought process on that change over time. 
as a whole, this movie does not have a ton of action. It really, there, there is a lot of downtime. And, and that's because the characters that there, I appreciated that. That wasn't, that didn't bother me. I honestly feel like I would have gotten really bored or tired of the whole thing if it had been overly actiony, if it had been too action packed. I just feel like that would have done a disservice to the story and to the characters, especially to the new characters that were being introduced. So that's not a complaint of mine. It is quite long. I think it's like, what, two hours and 30 or 40 something minutes. So make sure you go to the bathroom beforehand. But I liked the pacing. So I really have no complaints about the length. And I have no real complaints about the fact that it's it's not very actiony. Some people might not like that. I, I don't know. You know, that's been a complaint in some movies. Um, that's not always a complaint uh, of mine. Um, it's It's been... I can think of maybe two within this past year that I felt like the movies were a, a bit too long. One was the Batman and one was Bullet Train. But there are others that have been long and it doesn't bother me. And it all has to do with how they utilize the time. And I felt like with the case of this story and these characters, they did a pretty good job of that. I loved the cinematography and the scenery. It was gorgeous. The outfits, the costumes were just beautiful. I mean, it was a beautiful looking picture, just like the first Black Panther was beautiful with all the colorful costumes and the beautiful scenery. Also the score and the music. I really liked it. I thought it was just no complaints there. The editing, the action scenes, um, the editing was fun. Action scenes were okay. I mean, it wasn't like wasn't like the best I've ever seen, but it was all right. It was no, there were no really huge problems with it. I'm going to touch on some, some of the cons as the, as my review goes on. Something I completely forgot to mention in my video review is that there is only one mid credit scene. You don't need to wait until the end to see if something else is going to pop up. It's just one scene. It's pretty significant. Don't know what it's going to mean for the future, but be sure to stick around for that. Okay, back to the video. The performances of, let's say, Letitia and Lupita and Angela Bassett, very, very emotional, very well done. I felt like they did an extremely excellent job. <laughs> extremely excellent, whatever. She did an excellent job in her role. Angela Bassett, no complaints. Uh, Lupita was great. It was really awesome to hear her being, you know, being able to use her knowledge of Spanish. So, cause there's a uh, scene in here where she's speaking Spanish at a, at a bit of length. Also, she speaks French in here, but I, I she was born in Mexico and she's fluent in the language. So it was really cool to hear her be able to use that. I don't remember that she did that in the first movie, but she did here because the whole culture of Namor and, and him and his people, it's all grounded, rooted in uh, Mexican, ancient Mex Mexican civilization. I saw someone mention it was the Aztecs, but I don't think so. They talk about the Yucatan and the Mayan. So pretty sure it was supposed to be connected with the Mayan. Uh, civilization or something like that. So I can't think of anything else more to add to the pro side of things. I'm going to start to delve a bit into what I consider con territory. And part of that is the stuff with Namor. So they did this big change with Namor, right? They did a race swap on him as they often do with a lot of well-established characters. Whoa, characters, what in the heck? Characters. I don't like when they do that. That actually really grates on my nerves because I feel like, especially in today's time, it feels like it's very agenda driven. And so I don't appreciate when that happens. Almost every time I don't appreciate it. Especially now, if I go into something that I don't have any knowledge of and, and I'm just I'm just like a blank slate and like, I'm just, okay, this is the way it is. But if it's about characters that I'm familiar with and they do these big swaps like that, I don't like it. Having said that, I feel like in the case of this movie, it worked pretty well. And I'll tell you why. The optics. I feel like if they had stuck with him being his, you know, like his Atlantis, cause he's from Atlantis. 
if they had stuck with that, and his, you know, he's white, his character's white. If they had stuck with that, then you would have on screen white people and black people fighting. And the optics of that, especially today, might not have felt so awesome to watch, right? You know, not that it's necessarily awesome to watch people want to kill each other, but it just felt like it fit better, too, for one thing, because you have, so like Wakanda and their culture, and then you have the, his people, I don't, they didn't, what did they call themselves? I can't remember the name of their, their place. It was cool, the way they portrayed it and represented it, but it just felt like it, it seemed like a good fit to have his culture be represented as a culture from that place going to war with a culture from another totally different place and their friction with each other and their inability to work things out through the course of the film and then they come to physical uh, physical fighting and killing and stuff like that and so that's a weird way of saying that I didn't overly mind the swap that happened with his character. It felt like it fit. Let me look at that. That's that's some gorgeous costume stuff right there. Wardrobe, whatever. And the colors, it just, it, it looked good on screen and I felt like it worked for purposes of this movie. And so while I wasn't overly impressed with the character of Namor, the actor did a fine job. He was fine in the acting. I just wasn't overly impressed with his look. And by his look, I'm basically referring to his physique. He didn't give off this vibe of this uh, of this badass, you know, Marvel villain or antagonist or not anti um he's an antagonist but like a anti-hero. But he just didn't give off this really badassery vibe. So it was a little, I don't know, it, it's kind of, it, it, it's a nitpicky, it's probably a nitpicky thing to be thinking or saying, especially considering the fact that he doesn't necessarily have to be this perfectly in shape character because he's got these supernatural abilities. So it doesn't necessarily matter if he's not completely toned and sleek and everything. But when you think of superheroes and, and even though he's not a superhero but you know when you think of people that are super powered let's say they generally have this particular look to them that feels like it goes with the character in this case that that wasn't really the situation with him so uh, while his acting was fine i just i don't feel like he captured the essence and the threatening sort of presence that maybe would have been felt if he looked a bit different. Now, you could say with him being all garbed up with the, the thing on his head and, and the stuff he was wearing, like when it's showing him coming down to the throne and he had that stuff, that's pretty intimidating and that's pretty striking looking. So in this case, I feel like in a lot of ways, the wardrobe helped really bolster his character's appearance. Also... I mentioned this in my reaction to the trailer, but the CGI in here, there were some parts, especially in some of the fight scenes, especially with like, let's say Ironheart and Namor during some of his flying around, it really felt like compared to, let's say the first, the very first movie in the MCU, Iron Man, it really feels like in a lot of ways, the CGI of Marvel movies has degraded rather than improved. Uh, I, maybe it feels that way because a lot of films these days are so CGI heavy and they depend on it so much that it becomes really noticeable. But some parts where this movie stumbled a tad for me were those moments. When he's flying through the air and he's got his little feathers on, you know, his little wings on his ankles and it looked a bit hokey. I, I mean, it looked a bit hokey to me and so I was like, Ugh. but the strength of the movie is enough to kind of overcome 
that issue for me, probably because there wasn't a ton of action in here. The character of Ironheart. She is a character that felt like she was created specifically just because. And given her history in the comics, that also appears to be the case because she's a brand new character. She was first introduced in 2016. And though her character in here is important because she's kind of central to things that happen in the plot, she stuff that she has done is a plot device that moves the story forward. So she is important, but her character as a whole wasn't overly impressive to me. And I, I just feel like they're going to try to use her as this replacement for Iron Man because it's kind of like what she is in the comics. She's like a, you know, another version of Iron Man. I wasn't super blown away by her character and the performance of her character. The actor did fine. She was fine. All the acting in here was fine. But her character wasn't super compelling and the suit itself and the way they did the cgi of the suit i was thinking you know this looks like a cheap transformers you know or something from power rangers or something i mean just it wasn't impressive and i hope that they don't utilize her character too much in the future or if they do at least make some significant changes to the way her suit is supposed to look because I, it was just kind of mad. It just, it just, it didn't work so well for me. But those cons are, they're not really nitpicky because I feel like they were significant enough for me to notice multiple times. But as a whole, this movie, I feel, was a, a decent entry into the MCU. And I felt like it did a good job of honoring the legacy that Chadwick Boseman left behind. And as far as where I would place it in my enjoyment, I don't know. I would probably have to say that I definitely liked the first Black Panther more just because, I mean, it's, you know, Chadwick Boseman's involvement, he did such a good job. You can't, it's kind of hard to replace that. You can't really. Though I feel that everybody in here held their own and did a good job, it's not the same because he's gone, you know? And you can feel that. But I do personally feel that it was a wise decision not to recast him because when you do that, it's really hard to get beyond something like that when, it, when a character has been changed. Like, I'm still not over the fact that Don Cheadle replaced Terrence Howard. I felt like he was a terrible replacement. I know why it was done and whatever, but I have never liked Don Cheadle in that role. Never. I like Don Cheadle just fine, but I've never liked him in that role. And, and I also feel like not replacing him, acknowledging his passing, helps to ground this a bit more in reality, even though I know, come on whatever but it helps give it this realistic feel this depth to it that we might not have felt if they just replaced him with another actor and i really don't see how another actor could do as good of a job as he did so i am personally in support of and very happy with the decision that they made when it came to that and i feel like they did about as good of a job as they could do given the loss of chadwick and so because of that, I came away from this movie feeling pretty good about it. And I think most audience members in general will probably appreciate it as well. And hopefully it will do pretty decently at the box office this weekend. I guess we'll see. I, a guy sitting next to me in the movie theater told me, and I guess I'd completely forgotten because I haven't paid 100% attention to like, when phases begin and end, but this was, this movie marked the end of phase four. Thank goodness phase four is over because been, it's been a terrible phase, but it's marked the ending of phase four and Ant-Man will pick up with phase five. 
I'm kind of a, going into the, the the next phase of the MCU with the same feeling that I've had ever since Endgame happened. That, yeah, the best days are behind us. We'll have some bright spots here and there. I really feel like this was one of the bright spots in the MCU film lineup. And I um, don't think I have anything else to say without giving away stuff, which I don't want to do. Uh, some of the scenes in the trailer, by the way, don't show up here. And that was either by editing change or whatever. It's not necessarily misleading, but there's that scene where it showed the picture earlier where the Black Panther is like in a sandy place and you can just see the claw. They don't really show that in the movie. A scene does happen there, but they don't show that particular shot, which is too bad because I thought that was a pretty cool shot <laughs> from the trailer. Anyway, I don't have anything else to say, so I am going to pull the plug on this and we'll see you guys later. Bye.